buenos días. Eh, bienvenidos a la rueda de prensa de nuestra película, una de las películas de la sección oficial, eh, su temosa in the dusk. Eh, y para hablar de esta eh, película en, que está en, en competición, tenemos aquí a, a parte de su equipo. Eh, bueno, voy a presentar desde, desde la izquierda. Pido disculpas si mi pronunciación no es la correcta. Eh, tenemos a eh, Simona Ebenchkoskaite, que es asistente de dirección de la película, Joan Matos, coproductor, Jan Jacral, que es productora, Sarunas Bartas, que es el director guionista y también productor de la película, a Jurga Dichubiene, que es eh, productora, y a Alina Lukosevich, que es eh, comontadora, responsable de casting y ayudante de dirección también. Y bueno, antes de, si les parece, de abrir turno de preguntas, eh, para romper un poquito el hielo, sí me gustaría eh, pues que tanto el director como si los productores también quieren intervenir, eh, nos explicara un poquito cómo surge este, este proyecto. Eh, generalmente, en sus anteriores películas, eh, Salunas Bartas había tratado temas más bien contemporáneos y ambientes de, de la actualidad, pero esta película supone una, una vuelta al pasado, ¿no? una recreación histórica ambientada en el año 48. ¿Cuál era el interés por esta película? ¿no? ¿Podemos repetir la, la pregunta? No, I heard you. Oh. You can put... Can you, do you hear me? Do you hear him? Yes. Yeah, no, now yes. Sí, ok. <coughs> Repito. <laughs> vale. Right. Decía que, bueno, que que lanzaba la pregunta tanto a Sarunas como a los, a los productores también. ¿Por qué el interés por hacer una, una película, una recreación histórica como esta, una película ambiental del año 48, eh, cuando otras películas de, del director más bien trataban temas contemporáneos? ¿no? ¿Por qué esta, este trabajo de memoria histórica? Uh, you know, uh, it's my history, my history of my country. Uh -huh and I'm rather close, closely connected to the middle of the 20th century. And there was only, when I was uh, born, and al almost at the same time, the last partisan was killed in Lithuania. And uh, all my surround, my grandparents, my, my grand-grandparents were always talking about and, and from my very childhood, like six years old. So, and uh, then we were in the cage of Soviet Union for a long time, it's my youth. Then all the time that was very actual for me, this, you know, the occupation, the, the losing our independence and uh, uh, that's what that's very close it, uh, maybe it was too close for me to be able to make the film earlier I was always a little bit afraid to do that because of you know it's not easy to um, to decide to talk about your own country's history which is very painful for me Gracias. Sí, a ver, tenemos preguntas ya aquí primero y luego la señorita. Y ahí tenemos. Ahora sí. Eh, buenas. Eh, quería preguntar al director, eh, bueno, primero de todo, felicidades a todos por la película, eh, la acabo de ver y, y me ha fascinado. Eh, la primera pregunta que quería lanzar es eh, si el elemento principal que quería a, transmitir a través de esta película eh, es un sentido antipatriótico, no solo eh, una crítica contra... Eh, los, el lado soviético, sino también por el lado partisano, digamos. Y la segunda, eh, 
eh, va referida a la fotografía de, de la película, que llega a ser muy envolvente en momentos también muy minimalista y me gustaría saber, a ver si podía hablar un poquito más de, de cómo fue el proceso de fotografía. Gracias. So, anti-patriotic, uh, I don't think that the fake patriotism is, gives anything better to understanding of your, of your history. Because uh, you have to acknowledge that there was a war, the Second World War, and Lithuania was occupied uh, many times by, by, first by Germans, then by Russians, then by Germans again, and so on. It was like a field of battle, and people were exhausted. They, they, they also they went to the uh, to the tortures, tortures of of, of NKVD. I mean, the newcomers who were trying to 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 clear everything, you know territory out. There was no food, or, I mean, it was the lack of food and whatever. So it's a very strict situation in which you know, you, people are people. And I never wanted to show like kind of pseudo-patriotic film. And it's, a, it's, a, it's not for me. The question about photography, I didn't catch exactly what you was asking for. I mean, uh, photography is photography, it's a part of the film. So, minimalistic, yeah. I, I never liked, you know, to put uh, many effects on where it's not necessary. I mean, you have to, for me, the first, uh, there are few, um, requirements for photography. First you have to, to catch the, f the middle of the frame, I mean, not to look around and not to look what happens with a moving camera or whatever, or upside down camera, <coughs> and to see the people, because people are, or the landscapes are the most important, you have to be involved in that, and so, and it's on one hand it's simple and minimalistic, on the second hand, You have to feel it, and sometimes it's not so easy. Is that okay? Muy bien. Teníamos aquí otra pregunta. Hi, I would like to ask to whomever want to to answer about the hardships of shooting in such difficult weather conditions. Because I imagine them, there must be some particularly difficult stuff about adapting to the snow and the cold and all that kind of thing. It's not easy <laughs> at, <laughs> all, at all. Um, <coughs> no, uh, you, you told that someone else can answer, can, answer, can pass from to, to yeah, you. Claro, por supuesto. It was a long, long uh, stretch of years we didn't have uh, snow, and so this particular year when we decide to shoot the film, it, it starts snowing from the first day of the winter till the last day of the winter, we had snow. So we had to wait this period. We didn't shoot during the winter outside. Uh, no, we, we were shooting. We were shooting, but not, not in that deepest snow that we have. Also, uh, we lost how many cars, like four? Yes, we had, uh, we had the freezing, we no, didn't no, have we freezing did. cold, but we had ice on the road. So we had uh, 13 uh, car crashes during the shooting. But it uh, all ended well, but I mean, it was minor. But anyway, it was quite uh, describing the situation, what had to f go through. No, no, we jurors except three cars absolutely totally damaged. Smashed. <laughs> Smashed. <laughs> But not big injuries, thanks to God, and 13, uh, 14 <laughs> accidents because it's very slippery. And uh, when it's, it, for 10 years there was no snow, you know, I mean, I mean in the winter was melting uh, again, a bit snowing, melting. And this year was very particular. Every time, all the time, the snow, the ice, 
and of course the cleaning people they, 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 they cannot cannot make it in time sometimes so it was difficult of course to stay in, uh, in uh, we had big buckets with the, with the fire you know to, in, the, in the near near shooting camp you know, to heat and, and tried to heat us Mm -hmm. uh, question to Mr. Bartos, very strong film. Uh, we see many people praying in the film. We see an image of Jesus Christ. And that gave me a, 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 a curiosity to understand the, play, the, the, the importance of faith in that time and in that place. The idea of God in that place. Um, it's, it's natural, I mean, for especially for older people. It's nat it was natural to pray uh, every evening to have a little mass even. Like my grand grandparents, they always were doing kind of 45 minutes in the evening with candles and, and, and uh, reading from the Bible. And uh, Lithuania was very, very Catholic country, very, um, so this faith in God, of course, yes, people were uh, very used to that, but there was also a face of, of just feelings. Hola, eh, buenos días. Quería preguntarle al, al director, la historia se podría haber narrado desde perspectivas diferentes. ¿Por qué decides centrarla en, el, en un joven adolescente de 19 años? ¿Qué, qué te aporta esto a la, a la película? You mean the main character? Um, eventually, there are two main characters. I mean, they, they, they both. Um, uh, I don't think they. Unte maybe is a little bit longer in the, in the on the screen, but there are one youngster and one older man, old man, who raised him. So, um, you know, I was trying at least was trying to show that through through eyes of many people, eyes of partisans, eyes of Unte, eyes of his uh, step step stepfather. And, um, you know, of course, these youngsters who live the first time, you know, first, first happenings, it happens like it for, when they are 18, it, everything what happens, it's your life, it's nothing else. You don't know any, any other situations, you know. So that's very important because it's a very fresh thing. And um, later when something changes, when the, the war passes away, the, 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 uh, even in my situation, I, I now I'm in a free country. So I got a lot of changes, different changes in experience. So I, now I know that it might be like that or like that or like that. Many, many different and, uh, but 18 young, years young uh, guy, he doesn't know anything else. He just uh, just started to live. That's for me important. But as what I told you, that the, his stepfather's uh, actions and, and, and thoughts are also important for me. Mm -hmm. Chica. Sí, yo en realidad quería preguntarle también por esa perspectiva de, del adolescente, como ha dicho antes, que eh, de pequeño le contaban muchas historias eh, sobre eso y que lo tiene muy presente, hasta qué punto se, se nutre o se identifica él con ese punto de vista y hasta qué punto ha utilizado esas historias o alguna historia de las que le han contado, si nos puede contar. Yeah, there was like 
all the ambience, you know, uh, especially because after the Second World War, after 48 and later, we were occupied, so nothing, nothing changed. Uh, there was a prison, there was an iron curtain, and nobody, especially in the West, can even imagine that. And our, our youngsters now, they don't imagine that, they don't understand. I I was feeling it very hardly. I mean, very present when I was a child. So, and the front was coming through our uh, living houses of my grand grandparents uh, many times forwards backwards. So when we were digging with grandfather, let's say the ground for vegetables or something, where every every two minutes finding some. Uh, so, so Shells. So shells or something, or or a stick, you know, from the Second World War, rotten in the in the ground. Even my grandfather was uh, picking the unblown shells, drying them, then taking out the powder, the powder, the powder, drying it and showing it for me how it's how it works. When I was five or six years old, it was. It. So the, the war was very present there. Also, also the environment didn't change much because the economics of Soviet Union was very low. So nobody built anything like like very new or something. And, and after the Second World War, it's not like Germany, was a, which was absolutely rebuilt and restored a rather quick time. In Soviet, it didn't have it. It was like all, all the time this gray, 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 gray season for 50 years, I mean. So, and my grandparents, they were talkless. They, they just were, I, but I could hear all the time many, many details and whatever uh, about that, about, uh, let's say, one, one of my... Uh, the brother of my sister was killed when he was 17. He didn't do anything. He was just next to his house. So they were taking prisoners to to to, to shoot them, and they they took him and they together just like that. They killed in the next nearest uh, small forest. So I wasn't that all the time. And uh, my grandfather, he was um, he was trying to put in a larger, I mean, perspective of what happened and so on, explaining me many things about the uh, uh, why the Second World War eventually happened and so on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Hi, again. Um, uh, there is a scene in the movie, actually my favorite scene in the movie, is one in which they talk about how you should never lie even if the consequences are horrible. And I would like to know how come you decided to focus on that so much because it's, there's a whole scene just for that, so I imagine there's a message there. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a, not a message probably. <laughs> For, for me, I'm an, probably an old-fashioned guy, so for me, a message is an SMS, you know. <laughs> so, but, um, uh, of course, you, it's because, you know, the, the, his stepfather was, he felt himself like he would be involved in many different lies about, you know, the different lies and not, not exactly lying, but maybe in relationship with his uh, wife and whatever, and, and um, things what he didn't say to his stepson who he loves, he like his son. You know, he didn't say, because in many cases, the people who have no time, or a little bit, they, they are scared or some, something, and then they don't, talk to their children sometimes until they die. And then, then I, I, I met many people who, who were saying that, oh my God, why I didn't ask this or that from, for, from my parent or my father or my grandmother? I should have asked because 
it's not un un understandable what happened. So there are his life, this older man, he tries to 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 please different different uh, governments, different people, and so on to 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 keep his own own uh, farm, and and of course he has to lie. But he doesn't want Tuntia to lie, and it's normal. I would say, I, I am saying to my daughter the same. Yeah, please, just don't lie. Tell me the truth, and then we'll find a solution. It will be okay. Uh, just don't lie, because you know, when you lie, you don't know what you are yourself. And you are try, start starting to, to lose yourself. And you, just, and you never know when this lie, how deep it will go, where it will go, this lie, or something like that. And when it will end. Tenemos tiempo para alguna pregunta más, si alguien quiere. Si no, sí, sí, por supuesto. <laughs> Again, sorry, could be here all day. Um, since we have the casting director, I would like to know uh, how, how you chose those actors, because I thought they, they did a really good job. Another question? So it's... The main decision anyway was by Jurgen Sharunas. I was just scouting things. But the interesting fact is that most of the people appearing in film are not actors. Maybe 30% of them are only actors. So Unta, the main guy, when we, we, when we found him, he was maybe the first year student of the acting. But we found him not from the acting thing, but from the slam poetry because he would be reading poetry in the bars, and that's how we found him. And then all the partisans, you see the singing ones, right, with the beards, none of them are the actors, they're just, uh, not that they're, they're not regular people, you can tell that they are special, mm -hmm. but yet yeah, it's their first time appearance in, in, in a screen. Also Ignas, the householder, housekeeping guy, he is from our village where we live, and it's also his first appearance, and he was spectacular. Like You couldn't tell he's not an actor, very organic. And when it came to the casting, um, the f it was kind of few steps we had. So the first step was to check all the actors we have in Lithuania. And, you know, it's a small country, so we don't have much of those, like you know, usually. And then we started forming uh, the groups. And when it came to partisans, we realized that uh, the actors will not be enough and we would need to look out for the, for the wild casting, as you call it. So, and it wasn't easy also because we were, okay, so like the, normally the clue things are, we would search like in the army or the shooting clubs because the keywords were being able to have a gun and to being familiar with the survival in the nature, so that was the key words where to find it out of the actors. But with the army, it was difficult because they have a strict schedule and they wouldn't let people out. And also the villagers, but they are working, most of them, in the jobs. So eventually we found uh, these guys and we found them. Basically, they live in their own community and they are very connected to the Pagomiba, paganism, paganism, Pagan. shamanism, uh, nature, nature self-sustainable things. Put mall. Mall? Uh -huh. clay. clay. Clay houses they are building. So strong clay. Strong, yeah. So they are all about that. They are all about that. Yeah. So once we found them, we realized that we're gonna have to film. <laughs> Muy bien. Eh, no sé si hay alguna pregunta más. A mí ya para terminar eh, esta, esta rueda de prensa, eh, me gustaría plantear una pregunta, bueno, a, a toda la mesa en realidad, a los productores especialmente, en el sentido de que, bueno, como os he dicho aquí antes, eh, el relato de, que esta película muestra de la resistencia contra, contra la Unión Soviética no es el habitual relato heroico ¿no? que muchas veces vemos en este tipo de películas, que, que de la lucha contra el invasor, etcétera. Creo que es un un relato muy ambiguo, eh, donde hay además mucha oscuridad, hay traiciones, hay ajustes de cuentas, hay mentiras. 
Eh, es fácil sacar un proyecto como este eh, de, re de revisión de la historia del país, eh, porque puede ser incómodo quizá para eh, ciertas eh, personas, instituciones, etcétera, ¿no? revisar de esta manera eh, lo que pasó en Lituania en esa época. Uh, hello. Actually, it wasn't so difficult to gather all the people on the film because even though it's talking about the particular history of Lithuania, in a way, the story itself and the question of resistance and the committing to be part of it or not and all the complexities that you raised as question made a certain echo in, uh, in the countries of co-production. So, like in most of the author films nowadays, we needed to unify the forces together. So we are like six countries that participated in the financing of this film. And we financed the film in one year and a half. So actually, in a way, it went quite fast for nowadays cinema, the financing. It found a very positive uh, reception in the fans of all six countries. Uh -huh. And uh, um, I don't remember any film which all, everyone would be pleased by. <laughs> so someone was not pleased at all. <laughs> Desde luego. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not institutions. <laughs> They are too polite. <laughs> Just add up how it went to Lithuania after the premiere, because we have a national premiere. So no, it was no. quite divided mm -hmm. when people were like expecting to see it very heroic and clean partisans with clean uniforms and they were so angry that our partisans are tired. But I'm really proud of Shrunas that he <laughs> actually depicted it without any glance. And the other part of the people we were saying, yes, finally someone stopped pretending that there is a good guys and bad guys and that people are people. Yeah, about those heroines, I, I would ask just anyone who would imagine that, that it's 48, it's already three years uh, when they are in the forest, um, all the time, all the time, only being able, let's say, to get food from, from people around, and uh, only that supplies can help them, and, and, and living in the night time, almost not showing up in the daytime. So three years, can you imagine that? I think for many people, one year, one week, it would be a, a, a enormous uh, uh, event, event, you know, and three years with, a, with every, every minute waiting to be, to be uh, sure. surrounded and, yeah. and destroyed. So it would be abnormal that they would be in a different Uh, case and it, it was not and it was uh, of course uh, clear from many documents and, and, and their memories uh, where they were writing in, in their small notebooks which we could can read on today so. Muy bien. Pues bueno, entonces solo nos queda agradecer muchísimo a, al equipo que haya venido aquí a presentar la película, que esté con nosotros en San Sebastián, que podamos verla en pantalla y con ellos aquí presentes, y pues desearles muchísima suerte con la trayectoria de la película. Muchísimas gracias por haber venido. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.